Hi, guys. Today, we have Lesson 7, Speaking and Listening about the Nervous System. Our primary focus for today is I want you to be able to describe the nervous system as part of a larger, interconnected system. So let's take a look at a few vocabulary words that we'll begin hearing in today's listening and speaking. These words you may not know just yet, but with repeated exposure, hopefully you'll be able to get a good understanding of most of these words. The first is command. Command means control or power. Next, we have consciously. Consciously means to be done on purpose or deliberately. Next, we have coordinates or coordinating to make things to make different things work together effectively as a whole. Next, we have receptors. Receptors or organs or nerve endings that receive information from inside and outside of the body and send that information to the brain. And then finally, we have reflex. Reflex is an action that happens almost instantly, often without the brain sending a message to perform the action. Now, Remember in our previous read-alouds that the human body systems are interconnected. So let's just do a quick check. How are the skeletal system and the muscular system interconnected? Next question. Name the other systems you've heard about that are interconnected with the muscular system. Share with me what you remember about the different types of muscles and where they are located in the human body. And the final quick check question is, what is the difference between voluntary and involuntary muscles? Can you name examples of each? As always, remember to pause the video to answer any questions. You can always rewind if you need to as well. Remember that cells are the building blocks of life. All living things have cells. Can you explain to me the different types of cells that make up the tissues that are part of the different organs of the human body? We're going to remind you that the system that we're going to learn about today is the system that controls all the other body systems. As we go through today's read aloud, let's think and listen carefully to learn about the nervous system and how it commands the interconnected human body systems. You also need to listen to learn why the brain on Ricardo's t-shirt is the symbol for the nervous system. Stand up and stretch with me a moment before we begin. Put your hands on your hip bones and bend forward as far as you can. Now, straighten back up slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Ah, that's better. Now, I'm ready to get started. Are you? As you sit back down again, think about the body systems you used to move just now. Did you use your skeletal system? You bet. How about your muscular system? Absolutely. Your muscles helped move your bones when you stood up and bent down. But how did your muscles move? What told them what to do? Your brain. And your brain is part of a very important system. Does anyone know what that system is called? Ah, yes, the nervous system. Quick check. Remember to pause the video to answer. How do your muscles and bones work together? The nervous system is your body's command system, the one that sends orders to all parts of your body. It is your communication system, carrying messages that control all other systems. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord, Without these central controllers, none of your body's other functions would happen. Your brain is a soft mass of tissues protected by your skull. 
a rigid helmet-like structure of bones encasing the brain. The spinal cord, the main nerve pathway between your brain and the rest of your body, looks like a long, thin rope. Thick rope. It extends from the base of your skull, or brainstem, to your tailbone, stretching down the back. This rope-like cord weaves its way through openings in your back's bony vertebrae. Your spinal cord is protected by your spinal column. This flexible column of vertebrae. Quick check question, so remember to pause the video to answer. Why do you think it's important that the vertebrae of the backbone protect the spinal cord? A network of nerves links your brain and spinal cord to muscles and sense organs all over your body. Each nerve is a bundle of fibers, tiny thread-like cells encased in thin, fatty tissue. These bundles of specialized cells carry messages to and from the brain. These messages travel faster than the blink of an eye. Some, some nerve cells collect messages from your brain and carry them to your muscles. This is what happened when you stood and bent over a few minutes ago. You consciously controlled your own actions with your brain. First, you made the conscious decision to stand, and your brain received that decision. Then, electrical signals were sent out from your brain along nerve fibers to your muscles, telling them to tighten or contract. For every movement that you make, your brain coordinates the timing of muscle contractions, telling your muscles when to tighten, how much to tighten, and for how long. Your nervous system works with your bones and muscles to follow your brain's commands. So, quick question, quick check. Remember to pause the video to answer. How is bending over a conscious action? And the second question, remember to pause to answer. How does this nervous system work with the skeletal and muscular systems? Some nerve cells collect messages from parts of your body and from your environment and the world around you. These nerve cells are called receptors. Receptors collect messages through your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. Each of your five senses works with your brain to help you understand the world around you. Eyes pick up light and color and send pictures to the brain to help you see. Ears pick up vibrations from sound waves, carrying them to your brain to help you hear. Sensory cells in the nose react to chemicals in the air, sending messages to the brain to help you smell. Cells on the tongue react to chemicals in food, sending signals to the brain to help you taste. Receptors in your skin detect many different sensations, alerting your brain and spinal cord to feelings of pain, heat, cold, pressure, and touch. Many times, nerve signals pass through both your brain and spinal cord, but not always. Have you ever touched a hot iron or a hot pot on the stove? What happened? Most likely, you jerked your hand away from your heat very quickly, almost unconsciously. The nerves in your fingers sent signals to your spinal cord, but this time, you do not need your brain at all. Your spinal cord sent a message to your arm muscles, telling them to contract and pull back. This super quick reaction to an emergency situation is called a reflex. A reflex action, because the body acts automatically without thinking. Some of you may remember being at a doctor's office for a checkup when the doctor or nurse tapped your knee gently with a hard rubber tool called a plexer. Other common reflex actions are flinching and sneezing. Quick check. Remember to pause the video to answer the question. Who can tell me what your leg does when the rubber taps it? Because a nerve is made up of many cells, nerves can send many messages at once. 
Each nerve cell sends its own message through the nerve. You've learned that some nerve cells collect messages from the brain, whereas others collect messages from the environment. Still other nerve cells collect messages from inside your body. Inside the human body, the brain and spinal cord work together day and night, coordinating many activities that we don't really think about too often. For example, your breathing is controlled by the central nervous system. Hundreds of billions of microscopic cells are sending messages that go dashing about your body at amazing speeds every second. Many of these cells are bundled up inside nerves, the body's wiring. These nerves branch out in all directions, carrying tiny electrical chemical signals from your brain and spinal cord to the tips of your fingers and toes, to the inside of your ears and eyes, and to every other part of your body. Some nerves are much thinner than a strand of hair. Others are as thick as a bungee cord. All have an important part to play in the nervous system's non-stop communication process. The nervous system processes almost everything you do. It helps you laugh and scratch your chin. It helps you run and walk and swim. It lets you scream with anger and shout for joy. It lets you smell tomato soup simmering on the stove, hear squirrels rustling in the leaves, and see a brilliant sunrise peeping over the hill. Thank your nervous system for that tingling feeling that you get when you jump into a cold stream, or the instant pain you feel when you prick your finger on a rose's thorn. Whether you are 2 or 92, your nerves are a central part of everything you do. Next time, we'll look more closely at your body's main control center, the brain. Let's pause for a riddle before I go. Remember to pause the video at the end here. I'm called a bone, but I'm really a nerve. My name suggests that I have a sense of humor. What am I? Pause the answer. Give up? I'm the funny bone. Does anyone know where the funny bone is located? It is a vulnerable nerve at the end of the elbow bone. If you hit that nerve at the end of your elbow, the nerve sends a tingly feeling up the rest of your arm. If you injure your funny bone, the result is anything but funny. It can be very painful, causing numbness in your forearm and hand. So as it turns out, the funny bone is not only not funny, but it's not a bone at all. Be careful the next time you're wrestling with your friends. You won't be laughing if you hit your funny bone. Go ahead and take just a moment to look and find your funny bone. Pause the video while you do, and then come back. Well, I'll be back next time to tell you more about your body's command center. Can you guess what I mean when I say command center? Ah, uh, the hint is on my shirt. So see you later. Now you may have some questions from your teacher. Remember, you can rewatch the video to find, help find the answers if you need to, possibly. Take your time and do your best. I hope you learned something new today.